Hi, and welcome to Show Off. I'm your host, Dylan Scott. Today, we're at the Second Stage Theater here in Cromwell Hall at the Mississippi University for Women. Joining me today is two members from the musical group Hartle Road. They can be described as a kaleidoscope of sounds mixing psychedelic rock and new wave melodies. They have been writing and playing music in Columbus for more than a decade. Their upcoming album, titled Max 2, is set to release on September 29th. Please welcome Hartle Road. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for being here today, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, um, so, you know, you guys have been making music for some time now. Like, how, how did that start for all of you? Well, we began music, be playing music, uh, because we started as a family band, really. Uh, it started with me and Toby, our brothers, and then our cousin Miles is our bass player. Mm -hmm. So we would start playing, like, at family functions in our grandmother's garage. We would play for our family, and then started touring, started playing out, and soon after our friend Tyler Carter joined, who remains in the band today. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, and how long have y'all played with Tyler, you said? Uh, it's been about 10 years now. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. so from the early beginnings. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. He's originally from Tuscaloosa, but we met him just playing out. That was really the first town we kind of played outside of Columbus consistently. Okay. There really wasn't much to do in Columbus at the time. Yeah, yeah, and y'all y'all have been a, uh, somewhat of a staple in Columbus since then. I mean, I, I guess, you know, when I go out, I hear Hartle Road, among <laughs> other, other bands that, that are around. Do y'all have any particular influences uh, from Southern musicians, or what are your general influences? Um, I think that there's a lot of stuff going on right now, some of, some of which is very good in the South, some of which is not very good. Um, some of the Memphis stuff, for sure, you know, and we consider Memphis like the capital of Mississippi. I mean, you know, you're right there, like it's, it has that Mississippi feel, there's some great bands. Um, they've always embraced us well. I think the uh, overall just vibe of the South, you know, the mysticism of the South, and just people, you know, how people live in the South, I think that, you know, has a huge influence on us. You know, through music, through the way we carry ourselves, the way we do house shows, you know, it's very, it's community. Like, uh, you know, it's not, you know, super formal, you know. Um, and I think uh, there's, there's definitely some people from Columbus. I mean, yeah, Charles Henry Ford. Um, he's not a musician, but he's a literary art guy. Um, no longer with us, RIP, but, uh, you know, that's been a huge influence on us, I think, or me personally. I don't know, Max, what else do you have? Um, I think we've always been influenced by uh, just the historical Southern music, like um, Stax Records, um, any oh, yeah. of the Muscle Shoals stuff, just the, uh, I don't know, the recording aspect about it. Um, it's always been a big influence. And then, yeah, you know, family bands like the Leuven Brothers and, you know, their Blood Harmonies, it's always been a big influence and it's kind of inspired us to you know, uh, sing a lot and, I don't know, write about um, what we think is important to being here. So why record all analog? Why not just do it digitally like everyone else these days? Is that uh, important to you guys? Well, you know, I kind of have my own opinions on that, but I actually really don't do much with recording. So, you know, I think Max could probably tell you, you know, why we go to these extreme lengths to mm -hmm. do stuff so difficultly. Right. So uh, mostly uh, Miles and I recorded the music. Uh, Miles is actually kind of more of the mastermind of a lot of mixing and recording techniques. But um, I don't know, there's just something about the analog format that uh, we both find inspiring. There's a physicality to it. You can move the mixers, you know, the faders up and down. And it, uh, I don't know, it just has an instrument-like quality that gives uh, the mix a performance-like aspect. Um, and then also, to be honest, we just ended up with analog equipment. Um, we recorded our first record on a four track, and we just liked the uh, instantaneous aspect about it. We could put something down, immediately put something else down. And there was just uh, ways you can manipulate it that uh, we felt that digital was more difficult to grasp, I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, and I think there's also like an imperfect quality to uh, analog recording that I know I like. Like, you know, I think humans are imperfect, so it's natural 
more natural for us to do something where, you know, digital, you can just sheen something out and, you know, click it out, which is fine. I mean, we, we do stuff like that sometimes, like we record the drum machines and stuff. Yeah. So we definitely, you know, we use digital stuff. Like yeah. we don't digitally record, but I mean, we do digitally. Yeah, we have digital. Digital synths. Yeah, yeah. yeah, digital synthesizers, digital effects. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that uh, listening through the record. And um, was there like a certain style or anything you were aiming for with this particular one um, that maybe uh, you know you didn't get on the first record? Maybe you want to try something different. Well, this one is definitely uh, more hi-fi than mm -hmm. the first record. Max Two is a lot. You know, we recorded Max Two on the 16 track, which he mentioned earlier. I mean, we recorded Max on the four track on four track cassette. We ended up mixing it a little bit on the 16 track, but. We didn't really utilize it very much, and so you know, there's just yeah, you have four times the amount of tracks, so yeah. there's a lot more going on, a lot of uh, you know, just different yeah ways you layers. can mix the drums right, stereo yeah. mixing, just more stuff, you know, more stuff you can do, and uh, and some of that I mean, I think the songs are a little maybe more evolved, maybe you know, we've yeah. just been playing longer, but sure, we're pretty uh, yeah, I mean they're different, they're very different records, I would say. And when did the, that first album come out? Because y'all have been playing over 10 years. Like, so what got you to the point to like, hey, we need to record something now? You know? Um, the first record came out in 2016. Yep. Um, you know, we released a couple things beforehand. We sure. released a uh, 45 ourselves, and we released an EP with uh, Big Legal Mess out of Oxford. And it, you know, but we never, I mean, we were recording in studios at that time. And, uh, you know, I think once we just were like, you know, we're going to do it, we just understand ourselves. So, yeah, yeah. and it's, I really think Miles has a knack for recording. You know, he records other bands. Obviously, um, we've done that, that Calvin Johnson record that recently came out. You know, it was all recorded at our house. Miles recorded it all, mixed it at our house. Um, there's a band from Memphis who's um, really, really cool right now called Ibex Clone. Their record was cut. At, uh, at our house, at the new house. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, it just, yeah, I mean, once we really got into recording, I feel like that like opened us, you know, you don't have to pay for studio space. Sure, yeah. In your home. You, you definitely have, you know, the most control that you want, you know. Right? No doubt. Yeah, and um, that kind of, you saying Calvin Johnson kind of leads me into how did you kind of get with K Records and, um, you know, get, get their backing, I guess. Um, so we met Calvin through our friend Jamie Barrier, who released our first record, Max One, on his label Arkham Records. Okay. So uh, Calvin called Jamie and talked about wanting to play the South, and Jamie actually, um, he was actually, Calvin was coming down to record some with Jamie as well, and uh, our friend Lynn Bridges, who mixed Max One, um, Jamie asked him, hey, would you record this stuff with, of me and Calvin, and uh, Lynn said, you know, I think it would be really cool if you got these kids to do it. And we were pretty young at the time, and uh, Calvin was about two hours late to the first time we'd met him. He was playing a show in yes. Starful. People had left. Some people yeah, left. a lot of people thought we were lying about him coming. Yes, yes, um, yes. I wasn't even sure, to be honest. And uh, I don't know, I was just really, really moved by his performance. Um, I had read about him when I was younger, and... Uh, I don't know, I just thought his ethos was similar to what we wanted to do, just like doing it, representing a certain culture, representing your hometown, and mm -hmm. really just being a part of like, this yeah. is us, you know. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, getting your hands dirty, like mm -hmm. doing yeah. it yourself. Yeah, and then uh, after that, we just, we toured with them through the Southeast for, I mean, weeks at a time, and then he invited us out to the West Coast, and we had an incredible time, and uh, then he came, recorded more with us, and just been tied ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, yeah. So, um, well, what's, uh, you know, with this record, you've had a couple of videos come out, mm -hmm. and um, how was it making those? I hear this talented Dylan Scott was the, the director. So yeah, no how relation. Was it working with no, rela no, no relation. No relation to you, I'm, I've never I'm met afraid, him. but no. uh, he's an interesting guy, you know, we kind of, uh, the same way, you know, we make recording as difficult as we can. We made, you know, doing the videos as difficult as we could. We were like, you know, we're going to do all this on these DV cameras, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to David Lynch, <laughs> you know. Shout out to Inland Empire. Um, 
It was fun. I mean, again, it's organic. Like you're just kind of, you know, vibing. You're just hanging out. You're just, you know, you're wanting to do stuff. Um, you're doing stuff with your friends, so there's a really fun element to that. You know, I think it's all infectious. Um, the songs that we've done the videos for have been, yeah, I'd, I'd say some of those are more, some of the more upbeat ones. I mean, there's nothing really downbeat on the album, I wouldn't say, but you know, like some of those are like upbeat, dancey. So it's just fun. I mean, it's not hard to do things. You yeah. Know? You just, and you actually shot one on this very stage. This yeah. very stage. We yeah. grooved all night long you on did. this very stage. Yes. You did. Yes. Um, so, well, what's next for Hartle Road uh, in terms of uh, your record coming out? Um, do you have any plans with that? Are you uh, touring? We've got the album release show October 8th at Columbus uh -huh. Arts Council. Uh -huh. Okay. And we're really excited to work with them again. We had a great show back in March. March. There, mm -hmm. you know, we that's the that was the first time we had ever actually played there. We've never really done much with them beforehand, um, but we're excited to do that. I think we're going to be playing in the Omnova Theater upstairs, so it's going to be a good time. Um, and I think we're going to, yeah, it's going to be a special show. I mean, you know, we kind of get into this where we uh, we really play every show like it's just another show. There's always going to be another show, so you don't really make any show special. But I think we might do something interesting with this show. You yeah. know, just to put out the record and stuff, have fun with it. That's exciting, yeah. Well, for everything Hartle Road, you can visit them on the web at the links on your screen. Be on the lookout for this record, September 29th. It is going to be available at the Friendly City Bookstore in Columbus. So get it while supplies last.